Welcome to the Bridge Church Next Gen Podcast. This is Pastor Blake, and of course, joining me today is Pastor Phil. Hi, how's it going? I'm the children's pastor. Hello, hello. We are so excited for the Christmas season. We were just talking about Christmas traditions and what we do as a family. Phil, tell me tell me about what you guys do the day after Thanksgiving. The day after Thanksgiving, I, I will not allow any Christmas decorations in my house before Thanksgiving. Okay. And so the day after Thanksgiving, we turn on Elf and we decorate the tree and go all nuts on making it look like Christmas. I, I love that, first off. I like decorating before Thanksgiving. Because I, I feel like Christmas is such a short. Now he's like, That's he's ready to says. fight me right now. It's such a <laughs> short window of time that I'm like, man, we if we're gonna go all out, it needs to be up longer. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, my argument of that is I love Thanksgiving. That's my favorite holiday. Is really? Thanksgiving because of the family and the food. Because you don't have the distraction of the Christmas season and shopping and all that jazz. It's actually just about the family and the food, and that's what my favorite part is. So I don't want everybody to skip my Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because they're too eager for Christmas. It's like yeah, I'll get point. to Christmas. I like my Thanksgiving though. Don't erase it off the calendar. I I think you're the first person I've ever met that says Thanksgiving is their favorite holiday. I love Thanksgiving. I think that's so cool. I think it keeps the right things in focus. It's all about gratitude. It does. It does. But that's not why we're here. You're right. No, we are here to talk about this Christmas season and navigating all the chaos that comes with it. And navigating Christmas chaos. It's a real thing. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Yes. And maybe you're already feeling it right now. Maybe uh, whenever you start to listen, it's when we say Christmas, it doesn't always bring up warm feelings. Maybe you you have some flashbacks of some... uh, feisty Christmas dinners together or maybe some arguments going on. And so we just want to talk about how to navigate that, especially with your kids, how to make sure that they see Christmas as a healthy time of the year and uh, maybe they won't shoot their eye out or anything like that. Yeah, I know when we were talking about this podcast, we were thinking there's there's really three areas of stress that really cause it to be chaotic. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them being finances yeah, because, you know, Spending money on presents and decorations and food is not a small thing for a lot of right. families, especially if you got a lot of kids. Um, and then there's navigating the conflict with family members because family gatherings are not always the easiest thing to navigate yep. for some families. Yep. And then what, what was the third one? Our third one we talked about just navigating schedules. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's schedules. such a busy time, especially if your kids are in extracurriculars and they're trying to bounce around and do all their stuff while yeah. you're trying to get shopping done and you're trying to – also work, maybe get that overtime so you can afford those gifts. I just think there's a lot of things that kind of compound to make it a very chaotic season. Yeah, and then if you've got a blended family, you got divorce, you got remarriage, you've got uh, yeah. other family members that want to weigh in on what the tradition should be. That it can be a chaotic schedule. Yeah, we would always travel for Christmas, and so every day on my birthday, this is a little woe is me type of thing. Everyone pity me. Every Christmas Eve, we would drive up to Missouri. And from Oklahoma, and so my birthday was spent three hours in a car, and then w- <laughs> around 40 of my family members who ate all my cake. I never even got to eat my birthday cake, and so that was always our Christmas tradition, always traveling, always on the road, and it was a very, very busy time. And so we just want to talk about those three things and hopefully uh, give some advice, give some real practical things that you can walk away with today saying, you know what, I think I'm going to try that this year for Christmas Yeah, and hopefully help. So let's jump in. Let's. Let's do it. I, the first one, schedule. All right. With schedules, it can be crazy. Yeah. Um, why don't you give your suggestion first? Yeah. I, I think schedule-wise, maybe you're going to different parties and you're going to different uh, family members' houses. And I, I think something that would really benefit you is, one, talking with your spouse and, and, and even maybe it's a whole family meeting saying, hey, here is our schedule for the next week. Here's everything we have to do, making sure everyone knows what that schedule looks like that's going to take kind of anxiety out of way from those situations of like, okay, how long do we actually have to stay at our weird cousin's house? Like, how long do I actually have to be here? Or like, they don't have cable, Mom. What am I supposed to do? And it's like, oh, my goodness. What? Everyone just streams on their devices now. But that was always the thing for us. It's like, how long do we have to be here? And maybe setting up some plans to, to put in place and actually sticking to those plans that way when, when Grandma's like, but you guys can stay another day, right? Or you can, you can stay a, maybe a couple more days or just leave the grandkids. Like, you have a set plan in place that everyone says, sorry, we, we have this thing we have to go do. We have this plan. We've already made, and I think that will just help with the busyness and also, maybe the chaoticness of it. Yeah, that also translates between work and home. You need yeah. to be able to be open and honest with your employer, your employees, yeah. and make sure that you have that plan set in place and stick with it. Whatever the plan ends up right. being, you have to arrange that between your employer, your your kids, your 
outlaws and your in-laws and <laughs> yeah, figure out juggling what that plan is and make sure that you stick to it. A lot of people that you're kind of responsible to for a schedule. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, but don't let don't let the circumstances dictate your schedule. Right. You have to be intentional about deciding what is best for those affected. I think the other thing about your schedule is, uh, I know as pastors, we, I know it's probably the same for your work. We have these ebbing, flowing seasons of, mm-hmm. okay, this is a busy season, or this is a this is a not busy season. And knowing that you have to embrace the busy sometimes, yep. if you're allowed to admit that upcoming after it is a season of not busy. Yeah. You, you have to be able to say, I'm not going to live this busy lifestyle for my entire life. This is not a pattern. This is just Christmas. It'll pass. Right. Embracing it instead of expecting anything otherwise is sometimes helpful. Yeah. Just calling it what it is. This is going to be a busy time. And uh, we're going to prep for that and plan for that. And then afterwards, we're going to be able to rest a bit. Yeah. And part of that is guarding your day off, too. Yeah. I mean, you do have busy seasons. You got to go out and shop. You got to talk to the in laws. You got to finish that deadline. But at the same time, guard your day off like it's, like it's, committing adultery if you don't because it's in the same list as murder and adultery with the ten commandments take a day of rest yep take that seriously you actually have more control over that than you think so come up with the plan yep. stick to the plan and then schedule some rest time some downtime and make sure that you actually stick to that too right because sometimes we schedule that time and we go yeah but i really need to take care of this or yeah but i'll rest after i do this one thing it's like no take some time to rest yes cool secondly Talked about chaotic schedules, chaotic family. Oh, yes. The fun, dysfunctional Christmas dinners. Yeah, when you think about that, you're usually thinking about like Christmas vacation or something where you got this family conflict at the day of, but it's also the arrangement of the, the yeah. schedule and you got your conflict with your ex wife or whatever it is that you've got to deal with that you can't schedule this or somebody feels slighted because you didn't go over to their house or they're not mm-hmm. being included in something. And that can be a real stressor for a lot of families. Yeah. Um, did you want to s- start us off? I mean, I, I, I just, uh, I'm a big proponent of the plan. Just as someone who has to go between different families and one family being far away, it, we, we have the discussions, okay, who are we spending what holidays with? And I think sticking to the plan and letting them know up front, like, hey, we love you. We're just not going to be able to be at your house for this date. But we're going to celebrate at a different time. Yeah, I think that's helpful as far as my family dynamic relationships. But I know you can talk more on like as far as at the day, everyone's eating <laughs> someone just wants to start picking a fight and it's like what do you do in that moment yeah there is ample opportunity for conflict to arise at a family gathering yeah and i my best advice for that as a parent as you know as a child both sides of the equation pick your battles yeah. this is not the environment where you want to do that be the peacemaker jesus said blessed are the peacemakers and sitting around Thanksgiving table or Christmas dinner or around the tree opening presents is not the place or the time to empty out the dirty laundry. Right. You know, if, you're, if your gay cousin wants to bring his husband, this is not the place to confront him about his lifestyle. This is like, okay, I, I can accept you without approving of you, so right. let me just accept you today, and we're just going to let the conflict rise for a better occasion. So if you're you're going to have an intervention. Don't put it around the Christmas tree. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's such a teaching moment for your kids too, right? Is it It afterwards when they leave, whenever it's just you and your kids back again, you can say, Hey, you know, that's not something we agree with. And that's something that I'm going to bring up with them later, but this actually just isn't an opportune time. And what, what we're doing by accepting these people or not confronting them and embarrassing in front of everybody is we're showing love. Yeah. And what a great example to set for your kids in that moment. Yeah, if, if your auntie wants to pick a fight with grandma, you can step in and be the peacemaker and just say, you know what, we don't we don't have to do this here and now. There's a time and a place. Let's make let's make this a holiday. It's like, hey, you bro- both brought corn casserole. Calm down. I'll eat both of them. Right? Like you just <laughs> you don't have to say which one's better. But we all know whose is better. Yeah, we do. But uh the other one was finances, and I think this mm-hmm. this practically speaking is is probably the the most parenting problem that comes up is yeah. the finances because kids expect a lot out of christmas especially if their peers get a lot of cool new technology or toys yeah. or whatever and uh the 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 big advice for finances because we know that there's a lot of presents especially if you've got a big family right is don't don't cave into social pressure 
for sure. You don't have to feel obligated to buy the big thing or the multiple things or fill the stockings or fill the tree. You know, there's there's reality. And if you're honest and communicate with your kids, listen, this is how much we have to spend this year. Yeah. And just be honest with them that it's not going to be a bumper crop. That that's okay. You can be honest with your with your kids. Yeah. I think setting those expectations is is huge for that Christmas Day experience too, because they're not going into it thinking. I got the new puppy, a pony, and the PS5. Like, let's go, right? And then they're going to open all the gifts and be like, well, this is a PS2. Like, what the heck? And you're so excited for it because it's nostalgia, but it's like there's some disappointment to it. So I think being upfront about, hey, you know, we we love you, um, but we don't always show our love through gifts. There's other ways to show. I think there's a lot of underlying issues with this exact topic, right? Yeah, you we gave a, a really cool uh, really cool option for people, especially who have a big family who can't buy, you know, seven presents for their seven kids and they can't tell be playstations yeah but you said something that that your family values i'm trying to remember what i said now you said experiences yeah i i i do think there's something about experiences i know the big question that i mean i hear it at youth group i'm sure you hear it at kids church is people go okay what, what'd you get for christmas i mean the biggest question kids ask each other right and it's almost like you have to show off what you got and everything and i think something cool that could be more affordable is just an experience with your family and it doesn't it doesn't i said i mentioned a bucks game like go take one of your kids to a bucks game they don't have to be the best seats Mm -hmm. just get in the stadium right they don't have to just make it a fun time for them and what a yeah family went to six flags or our family went to you know yeah the redwood forest or whatever i mean those vacations can get expensive too but you don't have to make it a big expensive vacation you can have a fun experience with your kids without having to break the bank take them to the arcade in milwaukee that's just like old vintage arcade like that can be such an affordable opportunity experience there's so many different things go to a park and do a picnic like that's going to be a memorable thing with that the kid walks away with going man that was a lot of fun maybe not in the winter yeah i'm not doing it december 25th picnic (laughs) we're gonna build an igloo kids and this is our warmth (laughs) and we have to find our own food it'll be a whole excursion um but I just know there's a lot of social pressure, like you mentioned, and not feeling like our value is in what we can buy, I think is one of the underlying things as well. Yeah, but, modeling for your kids what is valuable. Right. And teaching, using it as a teachable moment. It's like, listen, what is, you can ask your question, your kids, they know the right answer. Yeah. Kids, what is Christmas really about? Jesus. It's going to be, it's going to be <laughs> Jesus and the, and love and peace and friendship and family. They're not going to say, well, they're probably not going to say it's all about the presence because yeah. they know that's the wrong answer, but helping them to understand that it's, it really isn't yeah. is a very valuable life lesson that you can extend at Christmas time. And, and sometimes if you don't have much money, it's a great uh, opportunity to share that. And For to sure. be honest, if you have a lot of money and you're giving your kids multiple PlayStation fives, <laughs> It's probably more important to teach them. Right. <laughs> it's more important yeah, that's to say, a good listen, point. this is not what this is about. I wanted to bless you with a cool thing, but listen, if you think this is Christmas, you're going to be sorely disappointed when you're living in a one-room apartment. That's where you just out. smash it in front of their face. <laughs> like, this isn't important. Uh, something cool, I'll just shout out Pastor Todd as we wrap up today, but I know what their family has done in the past, speaking of traditions, is they go and actually serve. They have served on Christmas at local places in, in Waukesha and um, I just think that's such a cool thing they're modeling for for their kids is they're saying, hey, this is what actually is important, is serving, right? And, and Christ came to serve us, and we're celebrating his coming at, at Christmas time. That's the time we choose to celebrate it. And so uh, I just think that's such a cool option that maybe you want to look into that this year. How can we actually serve as a family unit somewhere? And that kind of solves all three of those things because yeah. financially, you're giving, not receiving. Yeah. And as far as family conflict goes, it's hard to argue with I'm serving charity. Yeah. And then with the, you know, what was the other one? Schedule. Schedule. Con, uh, with the schedule, chaos, it's like if you yeah. if you make that a priority in your schedule, you can you can really work around serving. For sure. For sure. Yeah, and then when your kid gets asked, what would you get for Christmas? They can be like, I got a life lesson that I am so much more mature than you now, and I love people so yeah. much more than you. And we, we served at a soup kitchen. Yeah. What your family do for Christmas? Right. Oh, and you guys got <laughs> gifts? Mmm. Materialistic much? <laughs> you can shame other kids into making you feel bad. That is our <laughs> Take it how you want. All right. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you